Hello my soccer universe. Let's look at what happened in Bella Italia over the weekend. Well, I'm wearing Roma, so it gives you an idea that Milan did not necessarily win, but they're still barely, barely uh, <laughs> favorites in my model to win the Serie A title, but it's very, very, very close. Headline number one, Milan barely remains unbeaten. Headline number two, the gap is closing. So yeah, that's uh, the main story this weekend because uh, besides Lazio, all the others that you would consider uh, title contenders and Lazio, I'm not sure, is a title contender this season, they have won. And everything moves just a little, little bit, a little bit closer. So let's look at the game. I honestly have not seen anything on Friday or Saturday. So none of Sassos 1-0 win over Benevento. I had to look up the stats of Torino Udine where uh, in a crazy three minutes uh, Torino first equalizes a two-goal deficit and then goes down. 3-2, uh, which is the final result. I saw the highlights of Lazio against Verona. I have to say, the feeling I got is that Verona stole that one from Lazio, in, in, in a way. I mean, the first goal the, was an on goal by Lazari. He doesn't need to slide in, in, into the ball. It's a very, very tame uh, cross in. It would have uh, shot in. It would have gone beside. He gets it in and uh, makes a goal. He makes up for that with a nice assist to Caicedo who scores a great goal for an equalizer and you think yeah Lazio might turn turn around but then uh, Tamez uh, gives Verona the lead. Then a lot of chances for Lazio uh, that were uh, thwarted by Faroni. And Verona as I said steals that one from Lazio and Lazio already having actually a good but in the end shaky performance against Bruges and now against Verona. And this is another theme that goes all over Europe. Not so much in Serie A, although you could see it a little bit as well, that all the teams that were playing in Europe had a little bit of a rough time uh, this weekend. Yeah, Inter also almost uh, did an Inter like in the Champions League. In the first 15 minutes, they had so many chances that they, it should have, they should have put the game already away, but um, the goalkeeper, uh, Granio, Mr. the backup for Don Donnarumma, for the Azzurri. Saves, has a great game, makes many great saves. And then in the 40 seconds, Sotil gives, uh, Sotil gives Cagliari the lead. And with some luck, they could have even doubled that one. But that was the first chance by Cagliari. So rather against the run of play, really turning everything upside down. And then you have the feeling that, yeah, uh, been there, done that for Inter, uh, that they just can, they cannot find the breakthrough and then it is the Cagliari boy Barella who gets the equalizer of course <laughs> I didn't mean to do blah blah yes you're professional you need to you can celebrate even there I really hate this politically correct sorry 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 although for Barella I have to say maybe I buy it because he really grew up there and and so on so yeah but I don't like it you just don't celebrate and that's then that and then he even assists the goal by D'Ambrosio who uh, in the in the 84th, who uh, had it in from a short shot, it's I think on the far corner, um, and that turns the game around for Inter, who played in those horrible uh, <laughs> uh, tic tac toe churches. And when then uh, Kaller is pressing to get an equalizer, Lukaku can run through on goal. Uh, basically, an empty net for Inter, and yeah, they make a little bit up for what they missed in the Champions League and I have to say with Inter being now completely eliminated from, from Europe to me they become now the favorites to win it all because they really can concentrate on the league title. Um, Napoli, although they're now, let's do first um, Atalanta Fiorentina. Uh, that was for a long time a rather even game and then uh, Atalanta turned, turned it on and again there was the big bust up between uh, Papu Gomez and, uh, Gomez and uh, Gasparini. It seems like a struggle of power. Like, uh, Gasparini says, I'm only staying if Papu leaves, which I find rather weird. Can you just... I, I, I don't know, but seemingly Papu is on the market. Might be an interesting player for some uh, people but on the other, other side. I'm, I'm not sure if he will do well outside of uh, this cozy small team squad as Atalanta. 
Anyway, after the Buttercross Golson gives just before the half, Atalanta the 1 0 lead, and then with a great free kick, Man Malinowski in the 55th, 2 0, and then Toloi 63rd, 3 0. And Fiorentina gets another loss, and it looks really, really, really dire for Fiorentina, a team that had a whole lot higher ambition. And I'm still a little bit amazed that their rating is not dropping enough, that they're still here in eighth spot among the jerseys that I have and not Sampdori or someone else is moving in there. I think Fiorentina will battle against re relegation this season again, which just does not compute. They have such a talented squad. They need a good coach. Um, then uh, let's talk Bologna, Roma, a crazy game. I mean, Roma scoring every five minutes. Uh, in the 5th, in the 10th, in the 15th, uh, first an on goal, Poli, then Jaco, then Pellegrini, then take it a little bit back. Uh, Cristante produces a crazy on goal. I mean, it's not even a shot, it's a tame cross go, 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 come, coming in that Cristante completely mishits into his on goal. They said um, uh, that the, <laughs> the comedy said this shot was more, um, was more harmless than a baby uh, sucking on his. Um, no, what's the word? Forgot about it. A passive, a passy. Funny. Bologna uh, totally falling apart. We are two and Mikitarian at two more. It's five, one at a half. I think it has been less than the 30s that uh, Roma scored five goals in one half. Uh, goal for Dominguez for Bologna, who can make it a little bit more open in the second half. He's called back for offside. Even the picture did not really reveal that this was really an offside. Mayoral hits the, uh, the post. It could have been many, many more goals. A 5 1 quite um, good result, I have to say. Quite imposing result. Uh, Napoli, Sampdoria, Napoli again in playing in the Maradona tribute tri 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 jerseys. Uh, Sampdoria in black. So, uh, nice man, really nice jersey man matchup as well. And Sampdoria get actually a lead through Young Do. Uh, little bit against the run, the run of play, but they could back it up and held Napoli nicely at bay. However, you could see uh, Gattuso getting really upset uh, now uh, with glasses. I mean, there was this great scene where he's yelling and I'm putting on the glasses again and yelling, yelling even more. He makes the right changes. He takes Politano off and Fabian Ruiz off, brings Lozano and Petania, and it really pays off because Mertens then assists Lozano to make it 1 1 in the 53rd and Petania gets the winner. So uh, he basically. Uh, had the right choice there. They were then pressing for a third goal. I thought that uh, Napoli rather safely played it home for a 2-1. Juve, um, not great, but you know, um, patient, get the goal through Dybala after McKennie assist. However, Sturaro very quickly gets the equalizer and you think, oh, is Juve dropping points? No. Two uh, unnecessary but correct penalties were called then against Genoa. Both converted by uh, Cristiano in the 78th and then in the 89th and 3-1. So all the challengers to Milan have won. And I thought, yeah, they should actually now get an easy win against Parma. Uh, midweek they could s save the whole squad, purely change 10 players back. Uh, but to be honest, at the beginning they were a little bit slipping and when Hernano after Jovinio assist, I mean he's completely free, makes it 1-0 for uh, Parma. But I have trust in this Milan team, this is the first time in a long time, where I know that Milan is finding ways to win and uh, such a uh, goal going down doesn't really bother them all too much. And I thought, yeah, it goes all well in the 23rd, Castillejo scores the equalizer, unfortunately his leg is offside. <laughs> Didn't look like it, but when you look at the um, uh, picture, yes, it was an offside goal. I still thought, yes, Milan needed to be careful to not be caught on the counter, but they were really much better. And then uh, just, just before Brahim Diaz hits the bar, ball comes to Jalanoglu, takes a wonderful shot uh, that bounces and then up against the bar again. Then a free kick for Jalanoglu, hits the outside of the post. And then in the second half, he hits the post again. It was crazy. Milan really dominating, knocking on for, for the goal. And then they catch another counter, counter Hernandez to Kutic in the 56. It's 2 0 Parma. And I'm thinking, oh no. But I remembered they were 2 0 down against Verona. And I thought, yep, 
still gonna be 2 2, especially when Jalen Ugly assistant Theo Hernandez to make it rrr, two minutes later 1 2. I said, game, game on. But that actually took everything out of the game from that moment on. I mean, Mila had so many chances before that, but then for a long time they just could not get it going. Benazer went off injured, which I didn't like, and just when I thought, yeah, Mila is gonna get the first loss this season in the league, Theo Hernandez equalizes. 91st minute. Then they were pressing even for the 3-2 as a good team. Well, they get the 2-2. Yes, they will be disappointed that their lead it was now cut uh, short by two more points, so it's now a three-point lead. However, I think you can take very good things from this game that, again, you did not lose. You found a way to not lose, and this actually makes me very positive. I think Milan will definitely finish in the top four. Uh, I have the feeling that they will definitely finish top four Maybe there's more in there, but I'm not quite there yet. I have not arrived at the... I still think that Inter are the favorites. But if I look now at the uh, uh, table standings, three-point lead, I mean, I still take a three-point three lead. The only, the only thing is now that uh, if they would lose and Inter wins, then I think Inter would be head of the table. Um, the percentages, I went to the um, uh, decimals, Milan just by a hair, 0.1 ahead of Inter uh, favorable model in the championship. However, Inter is already a little bit more likely by 0.05% uh, percent to uh, get the Champions League spot. It seems pretty clear cut the four teams that make it into the Champions League if, if, if you look at the table. Roma and Atalanta give out the chances. Roma needs to be more consistent, to, to, to be honest, and they would be an absolute devastating team. If they go on a run, I think I could see Roma doing something, but honestly, I think the top four at the moment will look very strong, the top four, uh, towards the end of the season as well. Uh, lots of changes in the middle. Uh, I know we have Atalanta and Udine with one game less, so let's adjust the table for that. Nothing changes. Uh, on the bottom, it looks bad for Crotone and Genoa, Torino. <sighs> Like Fior Fiorentina, Torino Fiorentina should not be in that position. They have to way to tell in the squad. Spezia, Benevento, um, and Parma and Cagliari. Yeah, it's it's a tight race, I have to say. Again, we have a midweek round, and again, I have a tough time choosing because there's also Liverpool Spurs. Uh, Juve Atalanta early seems like a must watch already. Then we have Genoa Milan, which I should watch. And then Inter Nap Napoli is also a must watch, to be honest. So I'm really not ha happy that there's such a fixture congestion on Wednesday. Oh, don't like that ne necessarily. Uh, the other games, yeah, I mean, Thursday, Roma Torino, I'm also not, I also think this is a quite good one. And then um, a matchup that a few few week, we weeks ago on Sunday between Sassuolo and Milan would have meant uh, second against first. Milan better win that one. I have the feeling Atalanta-Roma, that's a rivalry. And Lazio-Napoli, also not a bad one. Inter though, having it rather easy against Spezia, they should win that one. And Juve also should win that one. Parma. Parma actually having quite a program. Uh, they had now to play Milan, now, uh, then they play Ju Juve at home. And I think Genoa also, the Juve, Milan, so there are a few smaller teams that have quite the program. Well, that was it for me for this um, weekend. As I said, I'm not 100% sure if I will do a midweek roundup. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I might also wait until a week from now. Let me know what you thought about the games this weekend. If you can fill me in, drop a line below. If I missed something, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the little bell icon so that you get an update whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, wish you a wonderful day. Bye.